Hi, this is Dave Gully from Pentagon Solutions and I'm going to take a look at two quick features in Revit. Uh, these are parts and displace views. And they're commonly unused features but they're very good for the show constructability. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to open a file from my vault. I can always have my data in a secure environment. And um, I have a particular file here that has uh, various walls but I need to break them down from a constructability point of view. And um, so I'm going to go into my 3D view. And you can see these walls, they actually represent um, going from one grid to another. And that's probably not how those walls will actually be constructed in site, particularly if they're going to be precast. And so I'm going to select these two walls in here. And along with ribbon at the top, you'll actually see under the create um, area, you'll see create parts. So this means I can actually sub-break them up into sub-components. So I'm going to simply go to create parts. Again on the ribbon along here, I want to actually divide these parts out. So I'm going to simply click on divide. And how I'm going to do this is by intersecting references. So this is either by levels or your grids. So we can see our options in here. We can pick levels, grids, um, or reference planes are all. I'm going to simply go to grid lines in here. I'm going to say I want to split these up along particular grid lines. So the grid lines I'm going to use, I'm going to use D, B1, and C1. I'm going to click OK and then I'm going to hit finish and you'll see that it's actually split those individual walls up. So that's maybe how they're precast. Um, the issue in this, looking at this a wee bit further, is that we may need to edit the divisions in here because that's typically not how that wall might be constructed. It might have joint information assigned to it. So if we pick the wall up, we can go to edit division. And in here, um, we can actually look at the properties of the division. I'm going to say that the profile, I'm going to apply a notch. And again, these are just simply profiles in here. So we're zooming in. Again, you can see that notch being applied. We might have a gap in that notch of 10 mil. But I want to make sure uh, that that actually is a mirrored notch. Again, you can customize these notches as well and simply hit finish. So what I've now I've got, I've got more of a construction joint um, on the actual wall. Any areas that are actually split that you don't want to split, you can simply select them like so, and you can merge the components up, say it's been cast like that or being delivered to site like that. So it's very useful to use parts to actually split these elements out, such as floors. Taking it a wee bit further, I'm just going to do a quick new file here, and uh, we're going to have a look at that from a wall basis. So I'm just going to simply sketch a very quick wall in here. Um, I'm going to be particular in the type of wall I'll pick, say, um, I'll pick one, make sure that's uh, probably rain screen or something like that in there. So we'll just scroll up, pick a wall, and then I'll give two positions or a couple of positions in there. So for the wall, I'm just going to simply add an opening in here. Um, so I'm just going to do a wall opening, uh, give it a position, and uh, put that wall in, put that opening in like so. I just need to stretch that one, and I'll just delete that wee opening out. So let's pop that out to 3D view. So we can see our wall detail in here. So say if this is a clouded wall, has an opening, it mightn't be constructed this way. Again, we need to break it down into individual parts. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna simply select the wall and again, go create parts. And what that'll do is actually split the wall up into its individual layers. So you can see that now I can actually individually pick these part up. So this cladding might have a certain type of constructability that I may want to demonstrate in here. So again, I'm going to go to divide parts. And for this, I'm going to edit the sketch. Um, and it's important to set the work plane. So I'm going to simply pick a plane, pick on the plane. And you know you should make sure that it's actually shown in there so you can actually see it has picked in the right plane. I'm just going to simply go through the process of actually putting some series of sketch lines. Sketch lines don't make any difference if they uh, cross there, uh, that won't matter at all. I'm just going to sketch out a couple areas where this wall will actually be divided up. So you'll get to see this come in, into its uh, constituent parts in there. So when I actually finish that out, click the tick and finish again, you'll see those wall components are actually in individual parts. And this is a great way to demonstrate constructability. Taking that a little bit further, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate that 3D view out there. So let's just simply duplicate that out. And I've got a copy of my 3D view. And you know, it's good practice. We should rename name that. We're going to say 3D displace view. Okay. And what we can do now with our components, we can simply select them up. And an option up here, we can displace the elements. As soon as I click on it, 
we can actually pick an element up to displace it. So now we're actually getting into the individually constructability so um, we can actually see behind the model elements. The great thing about this is it's not going to impact any other view I have in there. That displaced view is only applying to that single view. So we can show the contractor how information is actually being uh, put together uh, in a relevant environment. Um, so that's shown parts, uh, how you can actually use parts for likes of walls, you can use it for floor slabs and other areas, and that's showing displaced views. I'm David Colley, thanks for your time.